Vanessa has fatty liver, Dr. Bigman. What would you recommend that she do? Yeah, well, I'll answer my part, but as the clinician, Ken, I'd love to see and genuinely hear what you think about it. Yep. So just to cite human evidence, um, we know that most of the fat that, con that comes into, so, so the fat, the liver gets fat through two processes. One, it makes its own fat when insulin is elevated. Um, that is, but that's the second part. Uh, so I'm starting with the smaller portion of it. Most of the fat that comes into the liver is actually fat that's dripping out of fat cells when the fat cells become hypertrophic and insulin resistant. That is not the same as lipolysis when insulin is low. Because if you're breaking down fat when insulin is low, the liver can't store it. Because remember, cells will only store fat when insulin is elevated. And so when you flip this around and now it's a hypertrophic insulin resistant fat cell, you not only have elevated insulin, but the fat cells become resistant to insulin's efforts to try to inhibit fat breakdown. And so the fat cell basically says, insulin, I'm too big. I can't grow anymore. I can't listen to you. So I'm going to start leaking fats anyway. Now you have this paradoxical and pathogenic metabolic state where you have both high insulin and high free fatty acids. The liver bears the burden now. And so most of the fat that's constituting the fatty liver is coming from the fat cells that have become insulin resistant. So the solution is resolve the insulin resistance. The best way to do that is to adopt dietary changes that allow your insulin to come down because hyperinsulinemia is the primary driver of insulin resistance. So it's no surprise that there are multiple, some pilot studies, some deeper studies that show you can have complete resolution of fatty liver disease by just adopting a low carb diet. Paradoxically, that might be higher in fat because eating fat doesn't cause fatty liver disease. Insulin resistance does. And the relevance of the statins is utterly beyond me. Yeah, it's completely irrelevant. The statin's not going to help your fatty liver in any way that I can think of. Vanessa, I've got, I think, five or six videos on this YouTube channel about reversing fatty liver. Uh, if you'll adopt the lowest carbohydrate diet that you can tolerate, if you want to, so if you want to reverse your fatty liver very, very quickly, you need to adopt a carnivore diet. And within 90 to 180 days of a carnivore diet, your fatty liver will be completely gone. It will be back to normal if your fatty liver is indeed non-alcoholic fatty liver. If it wasn't caused by alcohol, if you're not continuing to drink, if you're not continuing to take uh, supplements or over-the-counter or prescription medications that are causing your fatty liver, you will reverse and completely cure your fatty liver within 90 to 180 days. Uh, keep in mind, Vanessa, that not only the fat can, uh, not only the liver can be bombarded with inappropriate pathological fat, also your pancreas. You can have fatty pancreas, which is a huge deal. You can have fatty heart. You can have fatty kidney. All of these things have been documented in the physiology. What about the, fatty tongue, Ken? I heard that from yep. you. Absolutely. I learned that from I've you. I've got a video, yeah. And so people with a, obstructive sleep apnea almost invariably have something called fatty tongue. And if you're like, well, I thought the tongue was muscle. Yes. And so if you can talk your sleep specialist into ordering an MRI, of the tongue and the throat, you can see this readily that the your tongue is marbled, just like a delicious ribeye steak is marbled with fat. If you have been eating too many carbohydrates, specifically too, drinking too much fructose, you're going to have fatty heart, even fatty lung has been documented, fatty kidney, fatty throat, and fatty tongue. And that's why the vast majority of people, when they when, when you go on a very low carbohydrate diet, your body's not an idiot. Your body is very ancient and very wise. It's going gonna, it's gonna to metabolize the, the most dangerous fats first. That's going to be the fat, probably the, the very first fat to go is fat that's been stored in the pancreas, then fatty liver, and then fatty kidney, then fatty heart, and then fatty tongue. And that's why so many people with obstructive sleep apnea, after three to 12 months on a ketogenic, a ketobore or a carnivore diet, they're like, dude, I don't even need my CPAP machine anymore. I sold it on eBay. I, I don't have a sleep apnea. And, and it's not, and, and so it is partially because you just lost weight overall. But specifically, it's because you reversed fatty tongue, which was the you you only have so much space in your oral cavity, in your oropharynx. And if you've got enough uh, marbling in your tongue, if you have enough fatty tongue, then when you sleep and all those muscles relax, that big fatty tongue is going to fall back into your airway 
you're going to have sleep apnea. And, and so not every single person losing weight cures their, their obstructive sleep apnea. There are very slender people who have obstructive sleep apnea. This is absolutely true. But even in slender people with OSA, they notice a great improvement in their symptoms when they reverse the fatty tongue that comes from being chronically hyperinsulinemic, which is a signal telling your body to store that fat in inappropriate areas. Yep. Hey, yeah. Ken, let me share one last thought about fatty yes. liver disease. Um, I would just want to know, um, the person, you want to know whether that's been confirmed through ultrasound or similar of the liver, because if the physician has just relied on your liver enzymes, so-called the, the transaminase enzymes, ALT and AST, you need to make sure that when you got that blood test, you didn't work out hard in, in within about a 24-hour period, because it's a little known secret, too little known, that those enzymes are also very heavily prominent within the muscle cell. And so if you've had a hard workout and done Excellent a little damage to your, extra, to your muscles, which is, does happen with workouts, especially if you've been working out the legs, then you will absolutely have higher levels of those enzymes in the blood. They didn't come from the liver. Your liver's perfectly healthy. It might've just come from, you, you, did a, you had a hard workout. So if you've been diagnosed with fatty liver disease, uh, you want to make sure that you didn't get that blood test following, you know, about a 24 hours of a hard workout, whether it was endurance or, or, or resistance exercise, because it's probably simply a sign of working muscles rather than damaged liver. That is a brilliant point. And this is something that many people in, in my tribe, and we're live right now in our private tribe, uh, that's, that's where these questions are coming from. Our tribe members are able to ask Dr. Bickman their personal questions directly. But so, so many people, and here's the problem. When I say people, I often mean healthcare providers, Dr. Bigman. They think that the AST and the ALT are like dummy lights on the dash of your car. Yep. And if the AL, ALT is high, that means you, you have fatty liver or some liver pathology. There is, that's it. There is no other explanation. And very, very often, and I find it to be just a principle of, of human physiology, there is nothing in the human body that just does one thing. I think that the list of things in your body that just does one thing and nothing else, you could probably count on one hand, if not two. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of different compounds in the human body. And so that's a brilliant point that just because your ALT is high, that, that does not mean you have fatty liver. Uh, you need to have your liver scanned. That's how you're going to document the fatty liver. And actually, the gut, still the gold standard to this day for fatty liver diagnosis is a liver biopsy. But now most docs don't want to do that. Most patients don't want to uh, have that done. And I, can, I don't blame you. But uh, just checking an AST and an ALT is not definitive for fatty liver. There are mm -hmm. multiple other things that ALT and AST are markers for. And they actually, are, they're not just produced by the liver. They're produced in multiple different places. The average healthcare provider has either never learned that or they've forgotten that. And therefore you're left with someone that, that has almost a crippled sense of human physiology. And, and, and very often it's to your detriment if you just blindly believe what they said. It's a brilliant point. Yep. Thank you for making that.